Hello to all my beautiful neighbors. Welcome to on Brit's block. I am Brit. As you come in, please like the video. That's me to get in the algorithm and see my more people. Also, if you have not hit the little red button, shall I go on that button tell your neighbors, family, and friends come on over to Brit's block and find out what's going on. And make sure now you turn on your notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be informed. And everything I'm saying is alleged and in my opinion. All right, my little ray of sunshine. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay, I'm here to get my thoughts on Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 8B, Episode 14. Y'all, it's the cardestity of it all. It is the cardestity of it all, meaning the audacity and sarcasm of it all. These women are so entitled. They disrespectful, they childish, and they ungrateful. I mean, the way they was acting, you would think they was really millionaires because they wanted to be catered to, and that's not how life works. So when it's so we're gonna get into it. Let's start it start with Melanie and Dr. Shanita and Lauren getting to the um villa where they were staying at. They get there and as they was walking to the villa, it was like a pathway and had a lot of flowers and vines and stuff and Melanie was like you know this is like an enchanted garden I hope I don't run to a snake Dr. Dr. Shanice said you work with snakes every day which is true and I, I like her because she that friend that regardless of what go on she gonna tell you the truth whether you like it or not and she ain't gonna cut no corners with you and I know Lauren probably do the same thing but Dr. Shanita it's boisterous with her. She gonna say her out loud. So they get to the door and they get this little young man come to the door. Little piece of um, chocolate, honey. Nice little black chocolate man. Come to the door and introduce himself. They get everything together. And they ask for champagne. So Mel said, well, let's go get uh, pick the rooms because I have some place cards. We're gonna go find our rooms and get their rooms together. So they go ahead and get the rooms. Now, Mel found her room first, and then they got to another room. And Dr. Shanita and Lauren like the same room. So I'm kind of jumping ahead of the way I'm supposed to be. So what Mel said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna pull the card for the for this for this bed. And they pulled the card and Lauren got the room, and Dr. Shanita's like, y'all, y'all rig this up. But she was playing. It was no problem, okay? You got this bed, we gonna move on. They finally got that bed. Then we come to the airport. When I tell y'all, these helpers right here don't piss me off. They are so ungrateful. They, you wouldn't even get to the airport good. The plane didn't even land good. Everybody off the plane while y'all already don't start whining and complaining. I need my husband to come and get this bag. I can't get this bag. I need my husband, first of all. If your luggage is that heavy, Take some of it out. Shouldn't borrow this stuff. Secondly, have y'all not been on a girl's trip or any trip by yourself where you had to get your own luggage? Thirdly, your luggage had wheels on it, so what you complaining about? All you had to get it was do is roll it. And I don't know why teacher complaining because she the help. That's all she do. She clean up, she the maid, and the mom, she the help. And um, Kimmy is too because she already said Maurice. Don't do nothing around the house that she need to get done. So all then they sit in the circle, circle. Now, Sunny walks up. Kim like, I didn't know she was coming. Kimmy, you have to know she's coming. It's not your business. This is not your trip, nor did you have to invite her. Melody didn't have to call nobody and say, look, this is the list of people that's going. I want to see if it's all right with y'all if they can go. And they got to understand that. Sunny is a part of the cast. She is no longer a producer. She is a cast mate. That same check that y'all get, she get that same check. So she walk up and Kimmy tried to give her a little half hearted, hey, how you doing? Which really pisses me off with Kimmy. Now, Sunny has been there for Kimmy. Kimmy had said her own mouth. 
when I had the bi biopsy going and rolling me in there, she had her face in the window praying. She brought food. She talked to me. She encouraged me. She said the same thing about Mel. She encouraged me. She brought food. She threw me a party and all this kind of stuff. But not one time Mel, she said, Tisha, Stormy, Miss Nail, none of that. But the very person that has your back and in there and the part of your village, you gonna get them your tail to kiss because you wanna make all these other fools over here unhappy. Ha make them happy. Crazy. So then everybody that, you know, just kind of barely parted their lips to say anything to her. Sidebar. Sonny said that she wanted to get a chance while she was there to sit down and talk to Melody and get to know her. Why can't all these other grown women on here? Why can't these little helpers on here do that same thing? She want to get to know Melanie personally in her own light of view, but everybody else would rather sit around here and listen to somebody else say what they don't like about somebody. And they say, you know, you don't like them. But yes, so so yes dear, y'all say y'all grown. Get to know that person for yourself, not through somebody else. They can, they're going to tell you whatever they want to. Especially if they mad. So Sonny is a smart woman because she want to get on here and talk to me and get to know her personally for herself. Not by what nobody else have said. Can you tell them other slurs to do the same thing, please? So Sonny was like, you know, where's Mel at? And they was like, you know, seeing here, where's your luggage? She's like, I gotta go get, get it. So while she was going to get the luggage, they all don't got on the van. She gets to the van and she like, you know, standing there for to get on. And then was like, let me move my stuff. And Kimmy like, it's going to be some problems. Again, you run your mouth, Kimmy. Again, you run your mouth. But then there, hell no, hell no. Oh, hell to the no, no, no. Hell to the no, no, no. You too old. Way too old. At this big age, you ain't to act the way you are. You are AARP car age. But yet still, you acting like you about 18, 19 years old, like, like a child. And it don't make no sense. That girl, all she want to do is get on the van. That's all. And she ain't got to hold your luggage. She's in the very back, but the way she acting, Nell, I think, was on something. Nell don't have an edible or a couple of drinks or something, because she was just, you could see it in her eyes how crazy she was. So, you know, Sunny went to the back of the bus, and she's like, it's like being on a with a group of girls going to school for the first time with a group of girls and they don't like you because they think you're going to take that man. Baby, you, you, we already know that you ain't going to take nobody's man. It's Kimmy and Nell who will. The, the, the main two pieces, side pieces up there, is going to took somebody's husband and the one got something to say. So they, they going along and then they get on to the, um, they going, they going on to the house. And then they go back to the house and then so two men came to the villa. So they gonna come in here and greet the ladies and everything. Mel got it all together. You know, give them a little, little eye candy. So she like, you know, hey, come on, you know. Y'all come on and do y'all thing for us. So now they on back up to the trip to the house. Here they go. Still complaining. Kimmy, I don't I don't like to do girl trips. I, I don't mind going on trips with my husband and all this kind of stuff and Y'all ain't got that yet. So you know how the, the girl trip gonna go before y'all get that. I guess she made her the, her mind up when they could get that luggage. And Stormy like, well, yeah, I like to go with um my husband, but I miss my child. And they was like, well, if you get a second baby, it's gonna be the story, which is true. When you get two kids, you be like, I can't wait to go somewhere. And I ain't probably ain't gonna even miss y'all. So she said, you know, she trying to get a servant. And Sonny says that, you know, well, yeah, we trying to have a baby too. Oh, you are? And she's like, yeah, we haven't, we don't split IVF. And she told her, you know, she don't, had, don't been around, but, you know, she didn't have a baby. And Stormy, thank the Lord, had a good heart. Like, I'm so sorry for the bad for you. Now, all the other women sitting in them on that bus, they had no compassion for her to say, you know what, it's all right, you know, just try to help out, you know, encourage her. Should I tell you these heifers right here? Cause they right there, they heifers and cows. That's all they are. Just nasty. 
So they finally get to the building, they get out, they look around like, oh, so, it's so nice out here. Somewhere you'll probably never go again. Now, the only person probably can be able to go and afford to be, be nailed. So they get to the building, they get in there, they looking around to see how pretty it is, the male, you know, greeting everybody, you know, how you doing? Next, Mel says, go on downstairs, go find your rooms, your name's on the bed, and come back, we're going to have a, um, our nurse has been prepared, prepared for us. Now, they get down there and start looking for their bed. So they go, um, Sunny room, Sunny got her own room, and it's like, okay, because she ain't familiar with the lines then with the rest of them. Then, um, Bush with Bill, which would be, uh, what's her name, Trish, and Sunny, I mean, uh, Stormy, they got their own room. Then Tish go ahead and see her, see her bed and stuff. Uh, I got to share a room with, I got to share a bathroom with Kimmy. Girl, you share a bathroom with Leak Leak. His booty leaking. And you going to get upset that you got to share a bathroom with Kimmy. You will to be glad that you're going to be able to be a refreshing, but I think she mad because she don't want nobody to smell all them toxins coming out of her little rear end. So that's why she wants to share a bathroom because, you know, Leak Leak, he used to smell that because both of them smell so bad. And you don't want to send them back with her. Now, when you see the room, there's three beds in there. But y'all, it's three full-size beds in this room. There's not twin, but they full-size beds. So you can get somebody else to be laying in bed with you and be comfortable. And a room big enough that you can go around and walk around in there. It's big enough for you to cuss the cat. You know, it's like a bed over here, a bed over there, a bed over there. When I went to college, we had two twin beds. And that room was small, but if, you're, if, you're, if a room can hold three, four beds, you good. So she, oh, she complaining. Uh, so she gave a green screen. So this room right here is telling us how Melanie really feels about us. What? What is you talking about? No. See, Melanie told you ahead of time. When y'all got the bag, and you said, can we invite a plus one? She said, yes. But that plus one will stay in the room with you. See, she thought Melanie was just joking. But she wasn't. So now she all been out of shape because you, Kimmy, and Destiny got to sleep in the same room. But you the one. Nobody else on that trip invited a plus one. So... Now we move the nail crazy to I don't know what she was on, but her, she goes and say, I ain't got no room. I ain't got nothing about getting no room. Nail, Mel comes up real calm and says, Nail, they uh, forgot to print your name card. But the room that's by itself, you know, a single room, that's your room. You, your room by yourself. You know, you you are um our elder. But I want my name called. Dr. Shanita looking at her like, are you serious? My name is not on my bed. I want a name card because I like to keep them. I, uh, that's not fair that I don't get a name card. You know what? This would have been Art Appreciation 101. Because I would have got a piece of paper, wrote her name on it, and scribbled some little nice designs on that, folded up, and gave it to her. Here is your card. And guess what? You know what? Since it's handwritten, you can keep it forever. So she just going, I mean, going to the left about the car, and she telling her, you older. What you mean by I'm older? You always said I'm older. Nell, you are older. You got kids that's over 30. And some of them are over, th some of them are 30. So yeah, you will be the oldest one there. So come on now, quit trying to act slow. And Mel tries to still tell her, hey, it's going to be all right. You got a room. Then they go back to here, go teach the sheep. She all man walking out. I'm finna go back. I want to go back to Huntsville. I should stay home. You would have been on the first thing smoking. Back to the airport. I heard you say that. Because I wouldn't put up with your mess. You would go on. So, Nell still whining. They, they go up there. She going in the room. What about this room right here? What about this room right here? Because then she, because, you know, when I, when I was in Houston, I didn't do you like that. When you were in Houston, these are two different trips. 
you got to put these trips together because number one, I mean, anybody can plan a trip to go to Houston or even St. Thomas, but all y'all did in, in Houston was have a free fall class, trust class, in which Melanie had already told you, don't put her with Martel, but what did you do? Put her with Martel. So you might have made a accommodation for her in Texas, you know, this is your room, this, that, and the other, but you still put her with the very person she said don't put her with, and she wasn't playing. She know what she had been through, but you didn't care enough about that. Y'all want to go ride horses. Y'all want to go talk to a counselor. I mean, anybody can do that in their own state. You can do that at home. So you ain't do that all, you know, all magical. But then, then Mel stepped, then Mel still had to call her down again. She don't went and looked in this room. What about this right here? Nell was like, look, I don't told you. This is your room. You have a room by yourself. If the, if the name card ain't there. I'm sorry. We will have to do something about that. I, what, what more can I do? We are friends now. I wouldn't do nothing to hurt you. You know, I love you. When you call me, I'm there for you. <laughs> I know that, but <laughs> my name card, it made me think about this thing. Y'all know I go to church. So one Sunday, we were singing a song called Sweetest Name I Know. And after the song was over, one of the minister, Minister Barbara Brown, she got up, she said, what's in the name? She said, my name is Barbara. There's no power in my name. She said, you know, so she's got people out around church, you know, there's no power. She said, the power is in the name of Jesus. So, now, your name has no power. It has no weight. It has nothing. And a little piece of paper it ain't, it's a, what, a, a three by five, a little wallet size piece of paper, picture that you could, wallet piece of paper that you could put your name on. You out here acting a plum fool about it. It's crazy. So they finally get her calm down. She just, she's still in the room. I, I'm going to deal with it, but it, it ain't about the room. It's about my name tag. Girl, bye. God, go. Oh, goodbye. Then she told me she can go home. She'd have been the other one that get on on that little bank, on that bus in that car with uh Tisha and get to the airport. So then you know Tisha always always crying. And he go keep around T T. This is just disrespectful. This is just so disrespectful. What's disrespectful, Tisha? What's gonna be disrespectful with that? When Mel find out the person you brought on the strip, that's gonna be disrespectful. She put y'all in that room because you brought somebody. So it's not disrespectful. So here come Bushwick Bill. That ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Should be somewhere in the corner in time out. Tending to her business, wanna run outside and feel like she need to check on Kimmy and Tisha. She don't even know them like that. And she like. Yeah, that's that's that wasn't right. Y'all should have got y'all own room. First of all, we don't want to hear your shoulda, coulda, woulda, because you this not your truth. And you should be having your mouth open. You'll never open your mouth. She's saying, you know, well, you know, y'all should have got another got another room in. They could have put me in the room with the other girls. What's that lady name? Talking about Dr. Sweet Foster. Let me say this one thing. I don't know why Bushwick Bill got so much smoke towards Melanie. Melanie has never done anything to her. She don't know Melanie. She has never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. But yet still, you got this bitch raw against her. And why? Because she was with your, she was married to your secret lover. Now, any other time it's time to say anything, when it's said, come to time to say something about Mel, Trish got her mouth so wide open, you could look down her throat and see her food digest. But when it come down to talking about them divorce papers and her and King get married, she like a puppet. You got to stick your hand up her ass and make her mouth move. I mean, so it's like, what, what are you mad about? This girl ain't did nothing to you. She didn't invite you on a trip. She didn't have to because you knew. 
So teachers told that this disrespectful. This I don't teacher think that she should have got her own room. After the fact again that man has told her you will stay in the room with your person that you broke. So did you think that Mel gonna put Sunny in the room with Destiny and Kimmy and you get Sunny in the room? Not gonna happen. That's right there was not happening. So she got this mentality, teacher got the mentality that I think she feel like it's seniority. Whoever been friends the longest should get this room or get that and other. Friendship has no seniority because you can be friends with me for 20 years. And and just be chaotic. But this person right here could be friends with me for six months. And it's the best friendship I've had in my life. So time don't mean nothing when it comes to friendship. Seniority is on a job. When you go to your job and you don't been there, you know, five or six years. And this person been here one. That's seniority. You don't have that in friendship. And she just keeps trying to say, you know, Mel's showing me how she feel about me. No, she's showing you what, she, what how you feel about yourself when you invite it. A second, a, another person. She just showing you. I told you this is what's gonna happen. You know that show and tell. It's all it is. So, Sonny decided to put on her producer hat mm -hmm. and said, "Well, Sonny went and told them that told Mel that you know some more issues about the rooms." And she said, well, "Who?" She said, "Kimmy and um, Tisha." Mel taking my side. And she shouldn't have to do that. It's like Mel has been up here trying to pet, pet these kids. Not because they ain't women, they children. Trying to pet them and make them happy since they walked in the door. Now she got to go out here and pet Kimmy and teach them. And Mel's like, what's the problem? And, you know, it, it's the room. It's, it, it's, it's so small and stuff. And that room is not small. It wasn't small at all. But my question too is, when you go out of town somewhere and y'all stay in the hotel, are, are you, are you, would you get a suite or something? Because we already know you can't afford no suite. Y'all get a basic hotel, you, Lee Lee, and them children sleep in that same room in close quarters and it's no problem. But now that you're here, you feel like you need queen status. You ain't the queen. See, you can take somebody out of the country, but you can't take the country out of them. And that's what teacher would think. And teacher thinks she's a millionaire. So if I would have had a problem with my room so bad, I would have said, you know what? Let me find me another place to go stay at because this is beneath me. But then, then when Mel explained to him, it's like, oh, oh, you know, I, I went mad. I went mad. I was just, you know, disappointed. And, and then when Mel um, tell her what's what, well, yeah, I understand now. I understand. You should have understood from the beginning. It shouldn't even be that hard. But, so then, Sonny, they put her, her producer out again, sitting there like that. Lord, she should have sat there like that. Nell was already on something. I don't know if Nell don't have an edible, if she don't, you know, have a little pen or, we know she's been drinking because if you look at Nell's eyes, you can tell she is out of this world. So Nell go out there and be like, you know, what y'all mad about? You know, we, we all in this close quarters. Y'all was mad at Houston, yeah. So and suck it up, get over it. When she said suck it up, that Kim went to the left. I don't know what suck it up mean to her in her world, but whatever it means, it pissed her slam off. She like, I ain't gotta suck nothing up. Da 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 da. She all in, all in male face. I mean, in male face, you know. It just ain't got nothing to do with you. Why you out here? I'm like, damn, Kimmy, I ain't never saw you this man, bro. Upset. So they going back and forth. And all of a sudden, Tisha reached out to pull um, Nell's shirt up. She said, your, your nipples out. When you in a heated argument, I don't know if Tisha know this. When you in a heated argument, you never put your hands on nobody. Because they don't know what, what you're going to do. They don't know why you got your hands on them. So when she put her hands on there, I said, boy, she about to get beat up. And my thing is, if her nipples fall out, them, them her nipples. Oh, well, she ought to put them up. That ain't not your job. 
She's not a kid. I know you used to being a mother, but Nell's not a kid. But Nell's gonna whoop her tail because she put her hands on me. So <laughs> Mel is trying to get them all diffused, and you go this way, go that way. And Nell then try to start walking off, share her name, and she came back for more. So they finally got together, you know, told Kim the woos, Kim and the woos I stood outside, and he go teach you know, we here. We here to have fun. And it's gonna be alright. Well, if it was gonna be alright, why was you whining about that bed, that little that sleeping situation? All you had to do is go in and get a bed. I don't know if it was the I don't know if it was mostly the bedroom or if she gotta share a bathroom and she know how bad she smell. So they get in the house and he go he go Melanie. Gotta call Nell down again. Nell come here. Come here, Nell. Come here, Nell. I'm like, I would have been doing that. I would say, Nell, come on to the door, because you got to go. We're not going to do this the whole time. And Nell and Nell sitting there, you know, she's trying to say, look, Nell, we're going to have fun. You know, this is this. She's still talking about that name tag. We're going to have fun. We're going to try to, you know, do the best. Here she, I want to I, I, I go back home. Everybody said they want to go back home. I would make that, I would be a genie in the bottle, and their dreams would come true. And I was sitting them right back. So they finally got together. They finally, everybody finally come down for a minute. And then Mel was like, you know, hey, we got some, since we're here for the carnival, but the carnival is not. This time we got some people that's going to represent it. So she brought in two ladies. They were beautiful ladies. They was in these big colorful outfits that you would see, you know, walking in the parades and stuff. Beautiful. And they was giving out bags. See, they, that's the Mel way. Mel do things. Big. She gave out some nice bags. Now, if there have been Kimmy or Tisha, you wouldn't have had no bag. And if you had one, it'd be that little, that little bag you get at Walmart for the birthday parties. But she had some nice big bags. And, you know, they was just dancing around and everything. So, um, Mel asked the little island boy, do you know how to dance? And he got there. He was all he was all on Mel, gyrating around her and stuff. And they just looking. I said, honey, Stella finna get her groove back. You know, Stella went to the island and got her little young man. Mel gonna mess around and come back with her one. But they was just having fun. And finally they get, so after that they go to dinner. First thing Tisha wanted to come out of her mouth and say, Mel, you asked about your single friends. What, why, why is it a problem? That Mel said to my single friends, first of all, this is a girl's trip. So, it shouldn't matter whether they're married or single. But, if they do anything they do, they can because they're single. So, don't be like that. Oh, she did that. She married. No, now you know they're single. So, when you sit there flirting or whatever, do whatever. They, they single women, but it shouldn't matter whether they're single or not. Because, in fact, those are Melanie friends and this is a girl's trip. The, they they are so worried that somebody gonna get their man, but believe me, Leaky Booty, uh, Caillou, He Man, Marquez, Hotel, don't, don't nobody want them. Don't nobody want them. You ain't gotta worry about nobody getting them men, but them, them women being single and they your man your men are not even there for you to worry about it. So what you bringing it up for? She always got to have something to say. She is another one. She is one child. Got to have something to say. Then um, they were sitting there. And they began to talk about like friendships or whatever. And Dr. Shanae was making some good points. You know who your friend, friend, your real friends are. You know, when you go through this, that, and the other. And all that kind of stuff. You know who your friends are. He goes, to um. She said, yeah, you right. You right, you right. Why are you even sitting here? Because you, you, you don't know what a real friend is. Because you don't know how to be a friend. Then the best part about it, when she asked Tisha, could you be around people that you don't like? Or that's not your friend? Yes, because I'm grown. That's the reason why you shouldn't be around. Because you're grown. You should know better. Grown people don't keep people in a space that they don't like. When you bring people around you 
that you don't like, they all they do is bring your energy down. You right now, you finna be low vibration. Your, your vibration is turned off. I don't want to be around nobody. If I don't like you, believe me, I ain't finna be in your way. I don't want to be around you because I don't want your spirit to taint my spirit. Because when you get on somebody you don't like, it's like all of a sudden you start feeling these vibes. You be like, whereas well, you could have been happy. I'm so excited about this. They come around and you just go, you get angry. I got somebody in my life like that. It's like, I can see you from a distance, but when, you, when I get around you, I just like, I can't stand it. I mean, it's just like, it's something about that person that vexes your spirit. But Tisha, well, I'm, I'm grown. And God's story was like, you know, we don't like each other. We ain't friends. And, and the doctor, um, she needed a little mail. Uh, mail said, you need to watch her. And she's like, watch me? Yes. Because if you can be around somebody enemy with no problem, or your enemy with no problem, you don't mind being, you will sit in any situation. You don't care what situation you'll be in. So, it's like, Tisha need, she, she grown as far as counting the wise, but not in real life. She's not grown because one already has been fighting about the battles and holding the hand. So then, Mel will hold mess itself. She said, well, since we're talking about friendships or whatever, we, we're going to talk about the two new people, talking about Bush with Bill and Sonny. She says, well, Bush with Bill, you got a problem with Sonny because of destiny. And, and so Bush, she's like, uh, I ain't got a problem with her. I'm just not going to, um, what's to say, converse with her. I'm not going, you know, I'm not going to be cordial with her. First of all, everybody need to get off Destiny train. Everybody want to jump on that train with Destiny because Destiny wanted and going around telling all these lies. And see, it wouldn't be so bad on, on Sunday if she would have been able to, from the beginning to get out and say, tell her story. But what happened was Destiny got out here first, whining and crying, telling her story, her so far, supposed side of the story first, and she just don't amped it up and ramped it up. So now, here go Trish over here, Bush with Bill, I don't like you because of Storm, because of Destiny. And they was like, you know, so Dr. Smith like, why you don't like her? So Mel was like, okay, Sonny used to be Destiny producer, and she married her ex-boyfriend. So, Shanita said the same thing, okay, that was her producer. No, it was her, and then he goes, I'm Bush with Bill. No, she was her producer, but she was supposed to be her friend. And you know, we, you no, know, producer and friends are two different things. If I'm your producer, and I'm working with you, we co-workers. We're not friends. Get the gift. We are not friends. I work with her. She worked with me. So Sonny even said, you know, then she be out everywhere. People saw her, saw them out together. Bush would be, what, what, did you see them out together? Because you and Destiny are not friends like that. So all you repeating out is what you don't hear. Because you just started um, doing weight lifts with, um, working out with Destiny. Well, yeah, they, they, they was out together and partying. Did you see it for yourself? Were you there? That's my question. Was you there? Because you act like you know exactly what happened. But let me say one thing to her. To get her straight. You sit up here worried about Sonny that married Destiny's ex-boyfriend. If Destiny broke up with him on August the 26th at 12.05 and Sunday got with him on August the 26th at 1 p.m., you know what? He was single because they were broke up. They were not together. Destiny had said it several times. I had already let him go. So what? But you sitting over here with a husband, a side piece, and a secret lover. And you worry about what somebody else is doing. You worry about somebody else's marriage and relationship. 
when you need to be sitting up here trying to figure out which one of them go get, okay? Are you scared that she gonna take one of your men? You ain't gotta worry about it. Mark Wes, he kind of slow in my in my in my book, and you know you gotta make sure he ain't no fruit booty. P man think he is the man and he not, and he man is dumb. You sitting there playing in his face and he letting you do it, and then hotel is just a hoe. So you yo yo three men they safe. Your husband, your side piece, and your secret lover, all them safe. Believe me, son ain't gonna want them at all. Nobody wants them. So, you should have been mad at somebody for no reason. Then, they were, so since they talking about, I'm sorry y'all, y'all, bring for you. So, Ned was like, you know, well, is destiny coming? Everybody looking like, what you say? Because I don't like to talk about nobody when they're not here. Now you full of what the what um Tay say he will go to what the bullshit. That's what you full of. Because you know good and well, if you just sit at the table last week and talk about stomach storming and molded as if they were sitting there. So don't say that. Don't even sit there and tell that lie that you won't talk about nobody. Ooh. Now just like the rest of them, she'll smile on your face and stab back stab you in the back too. I mean, cause I'm looking at Nell sideways now, because I really and truly thought she was Melanie's friend and was good people, but no, Nell ain't what she really say she is. So then they went on. So now that this, this time, Melanie found out that the person that Destiny is bringing, I mean, uh, Kim, I mean that girl Tisha is bringing, is Destiny. And she will say, Mel, you saw the text message. You know, no. First of all, when you when they showed the text message, you look on that. Mel did not respond to that text message. So how do you know she read it? How do you know she saw it? Like on my phone, if if I, if I send my message, they read it. It'll say they read it. But what you should have done was when you didn't get a response or answer that, that text, was call her and say, look, I'm bringing Destiny. Is it all right? She knew that it wasn't going to be all right. That's the main reason why she didn't call and say, can I bring her? Because she knew it was not going to be all right. Because Melanie don't like her. But you're going to do it anyway. So common sense, if I was, if it would been me, I'd be like, well, first of all, I wouldn't even invite a destiny. And if I was destiny, I wouldn't even came because I know this girl don't like me. And we, we, ain't, we don't even see eye to eye. We ain't even on that same page. So why would I want to go on your trip? But yes, still she did. So that's when Dr. She said right there, you know what? I told you. I told you. And she's like, what? You know, she said, you, basically you showing who you are when people show you who I believe them you know you sit here you know her, her and this girl don't have any kind of you know friendship and this girl has hurt her time and time again but yet still you're gonna you're gonna bring her you know so your actions on it I didn't say that and she's like I ain't saying you said your actions your actions are showing that you're not a real friend she teaches that dumb that she can't understand what nobody's saying she can't comprehend because she was telling her what you done was wrong. But yet still you say I'm your friend. And see again, I go back to that point well. When they was in Houston, um and Kiki came, God rest your soul, Kiki. You know, when Kiki came, it was oh, she was crying, just so upset and just oh uh, I mean just mad. And they sent Kiki away, but then yes, still you gonna turn around on this trip, this melody trip, and you're gonna bring destiny. See, they don't never see, they don't never see where they go wrong. Don't, don't do me wrong, but I can do you wrong. It's all right. Because she just, <laughs> you know, Mel said I can bring a plus one. I can't stand her. Especially the little whining voice. Tisha again need to grow up. So, that was the end of it. Um, They'll go next week into the episode. And Destiny was there. But all I can say is those women are too entitled for me it's the cardestity of it all y'all feel like you owe me something when you when i go somewhere i want the best they already know and they they said it several times within in the in the thing in the show that you know mel she she like the best she does and so she gonna get, try to give you the best but see you can't cut take the country or the hood out of anybody so they don't understand that 
but they whined the whole time when they got to the island off the plane they already complaining they get to the to the um house nice house beautiful scenery you got a infinity pool you see the ocean it's blue and they still complaining you can't you can't do nothing for them you i don't care what you try how right you gotta be how not you can't do nothing for them and i promise you if i was melody after this trip right here i never go on one with y'all again they have a cash trip let the cash go but i'm not going because it, it didn't make no sense but dr shanita when i tell you that's the friend that everybody should have she like me i'm that friend gonna tell you what i think you don't like it baby you'll get over it but it's to help you i ain't trying to harm you <laughs> oh, that's one thing I tell them about when when you hear me say, um, uh, let, let, let me tell you this. I don't mean no harm. When I say I don't mean no harm, I'm going to tell you something that you need to hear. And that's the kind of friend that you need that she's going to tell her. And it, do you think she cared that teacher was at that table? She so didn't. Look her right in the eye. Yeah, you. Watch you. See you. When you see how she doing, you believe her right there. And everybody, I mean, you, what could you say? You couldn't say nothing because, hey, that was the truth. That room assignment thing, the way Tisha carried on by that room. And I don't think Kimmy was just that mad as much as um, Tisha, but she could, okay, if you're going to be mad at anybody, Kimmy, please be mad at this. I mean, um, at, um, what's her name? Fisher Tisha. Because she the one invited Destiny. Which caused y'all to have three people in that room. Gonna get mad at somebody. Get mad at her. But I would say this was the best episode they have had. This whole season so far. Last week was good. But it's getting better and better. So hopefully it'll continue to get better. One thing I forgot to say. Melanie told Tisha. That you know. Her and. Dr. Shanita and Lauren. You know if they was together. They could sleep in that room. Tisha going to say, well, why y'all didn't take that room? This is Melanie's trip, Tisha. You ain't put a dime on this trip. Not one. So what make you think she need to go sleep in a room with three people when it's her trip? She going to get a nicer room. Like, you know, they give me your room because I deserve it. All you deserve is to be punched in the mouth. I wish somebody would take some super glue, some Gorilla Glue, glue your tongue to the roof of your mouth, and then take some needle and thread and sew your mouth together. So you gonna tell her on her trip why they don't go ahead and take their room. Keyword, it's her trip. You too entitled for me. It's the curiosity of it all. Okay, back to what I was saying. But it's, the ratings probably ain't gonna go nowhere, but yeah, this 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 show right here today, it pissed me off because I'm sitting there thinking, y'all some ungrateful, entitled, childish women. And now you the worst one out of them all, and you and you the, at your big AARP car age. I don't get it, but y'all, that's all I got for you. Get in the comments, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video. And you already know what to do, and let's have a great day on purpose. She got the news, the stories. Come over here, no worries.